This video was brought to you by Indently.io. Learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, I just wanted to talk about a little transition that I'm going to be making, and that is the transition from PyCharm to Z. And in these two scenes, you probably don't see that much of a difference. I just really want to give this a go because there's nothing really wrong with PyCharm. I mean, PyCharm is one of my favorite IDEs of all time. I just don't use any of the features or I don't think I'm using any of the features. And the community edition of PyCharm is completely free. Of course, if you want some of the added features, you're going to have to pay for the pro edition. But again, none of that really matters because I'm not using any of those features. I've been using PyCharm because I've always been a fan of JetBrains IDEs, but I've never really used any of the important features. Or at least that's what I think, because you never really realize what you have until it's gone. Of course, I'm always going to have the opportunity to switch back to PyCharm, but for the next couple of months, I'm going to try out Zed. And as you can see, it doesn't look that different, but it is a bit more minimalistic. And I'm going to have to get used to the key bindings. Things are a bit different here. It might even remind you of Visual Studio Code. But again, this is something new and it should be quite compatible with AI. So I really want to test out the features and share how it goes with you guys. So this video is just going to be a little showcase of Zed. I'm no expert by this point. I've only downloaded it maybe an hour ago. So I'm still exploring it and hopefully within a week's time or within a month's time, I'll be able to bring you guys updates on how it went. But practically you can download Zed for free at zed.dev.com. Oh, what am I saying .com? Zed.dev. And they advertise it as being the next generation code editor designed for high performance collaboration with humans and AI. So just to scratch the surface, it's supposed to be fast, intelligent, and good for collaborative efforts. And then world-class developers such as myself, I'm just kidding, of course, use Zed as well, such as Apple and the rest of these companies. And I'm saying the rest of these companies because I haven't heard of more than half of them. But I'm sure if you're into tech, you've probably heard about them. And something else that's nice about it is that it is open source but I'm going to be leaving a link in the description box down below, just in case you want to check this out. Feel more than free to actually read what it says. I'm going to do a bit more research myself later and bring you guys the updates. Otherwise, let's get to the actual code editor. At a first glance, it's going to look a lot like my PyCharm setup. And I've been doing my best to actually mimic all the features that I'm using in PyCharm. For example, one thing I spent a lot of time doing is figuring out how to use templates because you can do that also in other code editors. In PyCharm, they call them live templates and they're quite easy to configure, but here it actually required some extra setup. It's not impossible, it just takes getting used to the syntax on how to actually create placeholders. Now, one thing that makes Zed very special is that pretty much every single setting is configured via a JSON file, which means if you want to add some key bindings, you're going to have to read the docs and see what does what. But thanks to that, it's actually quite easy to create key bindings. You just need to get used to the syntax and then you can use it. So practically the first hour is just going to be a massive headache trying to learn all of the commands and what does what. But once you get the hang of it, I find this to be quite convenient because you get to decide how you structure your JSON. I didn't put this in any order, so that's actually a very poor excuse at the moment. But if I wanted to, I could decide how to organize this as long as it's a JSON file. So you would use JSON for key maps and also for additional settings. If we were to go to the settings, you can see that you can do things such as override the current theme. And that's quite convenient because I really enjoy having purple for keywords. But if we wanted to change the theme, we can do something simple such as open up the search bar or whatever they call it and tap on theme toggle. And like this, we can actually see each theme in real time. Sorry about light mode, I should have added a disclaimer, but as you can see, it's easy as that to actually select a new theme, which I find really nice because it's nice to be able to preview the theme and compare it side by side. Something else I really enjoy about Zed is something which they call tasks. And tasks are pretty much small scripts or functionality that you can run in Zed. For example, if we were to go to our main script, I can do shift command plus M, which is a task I created and that runs my pie. That just means that I don't have to type in my pie main dot pie each time I want to scan my file. Also, at any point, if I want to run my script, 
And first, maybe I should print something such as hello world. But if at any point I want to run this script, I can hold down command plus R, which is another task that I created. And I gave it the title of Python uses run. And for MyPy, I gave it the title of MyPy uses check because I really wanted to mimic the Pokemon feel of, I don't know, just Pokemon. I thought it would be quite fun. And apparently I can't spell either. So we'll just fix that and rerun it. But I just wanted to mimic that Pokemon feel that Python's doing something and MyPy's attacking or whatever. So that's something I really appreciate about Zed is that it's highly customizable via JSON files. And if we actually go back to tasks and see what's inside here, you'll see that you can actually do anything. You can create a virtual environment. And I forgot what shortcut I gave that. So I'm going to have to go back to, let's say, key map. And apparently, and apparently I gave that the command shift plus V shortcut. So as you can see, you can create your very own custom commands, which can end up saving you time. And as always, the sky is the limit with what you're doing. So I'll definitely update you guys with how this goes. And if you're already using Zed, I would love to hear any tips or tricks you have regarding what I can do to optimize it or to make it more fun and enjoyable to use. Because at this point, it's very minimalistic. I mean, it works just like any other code editor. You can write some code. It has auto completion. So we can do hello world. I really can't spell today. And if we save and run it, it's going to print it to the console. Otherwise, if you were to create a variable of type integer and say that that's equal to 100 and you were to print that variable, you'll see that that will work as well. And that we also have refractoring. We can say variable is now number and it will update it throughout the script. So it's really just a minimalistic code editor. And again, there's nothing wrong with PyCharm. I'm just not using any of the features, making it very easy for me to transition to literally anything. And yeah, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.